This is Professor Derf Seitz. This Java tutorial is part three on applets. It's we'll look at a simple applet. Here in Windows Explorer are the files that will be involved with this simple applet. There's the Java source file, the class file from compiling it, and there's an HTML file, a hypertext markup language file that's needed to host the applet inside a web browser. We will not be running our applet in a web browser because it's not coming from a server and the security uh, restrictions on the browser make it impractical to test it that way. We'll be testing our applet in the applet viewer, the Java Development Kit's applet viewer, and we'll be using TextPad as our editor and simple IDE to compile and execute the applet. So we'll switch over now to TextPad and look at these files. First we'll look at the HTML file. This is the web page that the applet is hosted in. And the web page will be running normally inside a web browser. It's a, web pages are made up of tags. Here's an HTML tag and at the end is a closing HTML tag. It, they're like a pair of bookends that show the block, but the area for the HTML. Inside the HTML there are many, many different kinds of tags and attributes in tags. We're only looking at a few here, just enough to get a, our applet going. There's a body tag for the body of the HTML and its closing tag. This is a comment here where you can put your name. The P tag is a paragraph. There's a paragraph here. It says when you run in the applet viewer only the applet is shown. Other HTML elements like this paragraph can only be viewed in a web browser. The applet viewer is only going to show us our applet window. Here's the tag, applet and the closing tag, the bookends for an applet, and tags can have attributes. It has a code attribute, a code base, a width, and a height. Those are called attributes and their values. The code is the class file, the name, simpleapplet.class. The code base tells where to look for the code relative to the HTML page. In a period, a dot means look in the current folder, the current directory. So wherever this HTML page is running, in the same folder it will look for the class file. You can change this to be other relative locations relative to where the HTML file is. And normally in a real application there's different folders for the HTML files and other folders for the, the applets and other folders for JavaScript which we're not talking about in this tutorial but we mentioned in a previous one on applets deployment. So back to our tag here. Uh, the applet window, you specify its width and its height, 400 pixels by 300, and that's what a very simple HTML page looks like that has an applet embedded inside it. Switching over now to the actual applet source code, here it is. Our class name is Simple Applet, and it must extend J Applet. We looked at J Applet in the class diagram tutorial about applets. So every applet is going to extend, that's an inheritance relationship, J Applet. 
The main function in our applet here, this simple one, there's a paint function and that function will be automatically called anytime your applet needs to show itself either for the first time or any other time uh, that it would be covered by and then uncovered and needs to show itself again. In our simple test it will only happen the first time we show it. There will be no covering or uncovering. Since we're dealing with inheritance, this thing here, if you haven't studied inheritance, don't worry about it. You have to call super.paint passing the G. That calls the parent class, the J applet, its own paint method passing the G so that it can do its part of the painting, whatever it needs to do. And that has to be the first line of code in your applet. It's important that you have that and it be the first line of code in your paint function. Actually, not in your applet, but in the paint function. Then you have your drawing code. This is a comment. This applet only prints out or displays or draws. Uh, this is a simple applet. Draw string is the function that's used to do that. Draw string is in the graphics class, so you use your graphics object G that's passed to your function here, G dot draw string, and you have your string in quotes, and you tell where you want your um, string to be drawn. This is the X and the Y coordinates. And x and y coordinates is important to understand if we just look at this little window we're looking at here. In the upper left is where the 0, 0. X's go to the right increasing as you go across. And y's increase as you're going down. So, and they're positive. So you have a positive x getting bigger and bigger this way. A positive y getting bigger and bigger this way and any place in your window has a distance over from the left, that's its x coordinate, and a distance down from the top, that'll be its y coordinate in the drawing. So we're going to be drawing our, <clears throat> this is a simple Java applet, at location 100, 100. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and compile uh, this applet. So when I compile it, it says it successfully compiled. And then I want to run it. I'm, I'm in TextPad, the TextPad editor, and you need to be careful because if I try to run it as an application, uh, I'm using Control 2, uh, the tool, Tools menu also has menu options. If I do that, I'm going to get an error here that, uh, let me bring it into view, it says main method not found in class simple applet, please define the main method. That's because if you try to run it as an application, applications need a main method. Well, an, an applet is not an application, so you can't run it. There's a special text pad uh, menu item for running applets and the keyboard is control 3 so hitting control 3 we'll see our applet run so I'll hit control 3 now and first it's going to ask me for what HTML file do I want to use this is in TextPad the editor serving as a little IDE here an integrated development environment it, it has the ability to integrate integrate with the Java Development Kit. It's going to look in the current folder and see what HTML files are in there and if you want to pick one out of there you can. I will I'll pick that one. It has really no effect except for the size. It's where it's going to pick up the size, right? I think it was 400 by 300. We just The width and the height was in the HTML file so that is an important aspect of having it. HTML page because you want your page dimensions in your drawing to be in sync. You know, you, you have to know how big your window is in order to draw. 
so you don't draw things outside of it or put them in that one area and it doesn't look right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say to use that one. If we said no or if we didn't have an HTML file, TextPad would create one for us with some default dimensions, which I don't recall offhand. So we'll say to use that. And now it's going to display our applet and I need to resize the window so you can see everything here. So our applet is being displayed here in the applet viewer. Notice it says the applet viewer, simple applet class. It has a status line at the bottom of the viewer, it says applet started. It also puts this text here in a band across the top, it takes up a little bit of area of your applet, it says applet. That's not part of the applet. And then here's our applet. It says this is a simple Java applet. This is 100 over on the X and 100 down on the Y. It's a simple applet. It only displays some text. That's it. And notice in the background here there is a console window as well uh, being shown. So if I close this applet it closes the console window and then I'm back in TextPad looking at this uh, window. I'll resize it again. And here it is resized. So again we have the HTML file. The important part there is specifying the width and height in the applet viewer. The applet viewer will resize itself appropriately. And then in our applet Oh, we need the import statements up here. We have to import Java X Swing J applet, uh, the Java Aut graphics, and I also included color and polygon in this little template because in general, as we'll see, we'll be using those uh, for draw um, for applet display drawing beyond this simple little string applet here. So that. Uh, should give you a, a start on how to get going on an applet. In the next tutorial we'll be looking at an applet that draws a number of different things uh, on the, in the window. And um, so stay tuned.